Hello and welcome to the Crochet Business School podcast, where you can use your crochet to build a business that will give you the lifestyle you've been dreaming of. Can you sell your crochet if you have pets? The short answer is yes you can, but there are some things you need to take into consideration. Lots of people have allergies to animals. Cats and dogs being the most common, but any animal with fur can cause an allergic reaction to someone who comes in contact with the dander. It's not usually the fur itself that causes the allergic reaction, it's the dander or the skin particles attached to that fur. So if you're going to sell your crochet and you have pets, the first thing you need to do is try and make sure that you keep your yarn away from your pets. The ideal situation is to have your yarn and to make and to crochet your items in a separate room that they don't have access to. Now I know that's not always possible. I didn't have my own crochet room when I was selling what I made. But what I did do was keep my yarn in a set of drawers. So I'll try and keep it as fur free as possible. The other thing I did was on the listings, so I sold on Etsy and on my product listing on Etsy I had a, a statement at the, in the description to say that I had a dog and as much as I try and keep her fur away from my work, that, but as hard as I try, a little bit of fur may turn up. So a little statement to that effect. You just need to inform people. Most people don't mind you know, the odd stray hair appearing in what you buy as long as they know. They take exception when you don't give the information. Some people's allergies are really quite severe, so you really do need to make sure that you're given, giving people a chance to know. The other thing to think about is how you present your pets on social media. I mean, we love showing off our fur babies. They are wonderful and they always create really good engagement on social media. But what you shouldn't do is show pictures of your pets either lying on your yarn, sitting on what you're currently making. Because if you've got a statement in your product descriptions saying I try my best to keep my pets away from my yarn and then on your social media you've got your pet sat on your yarn that's a complete contradiction and also having pictures of your pet sat on your yarn and what you're making that could end up with a customer nobody wants pet bum on their on what they've just bought it's not a good image, it's not very professional and it make, can make your customer feel a little bit icky about where what they've just bought has been. So it's just something that you need to think about. Presenting your pets on your social media, yeah, it's great. It's also a great way to make your customers aware that you have a pet. Just not all over your yarn or all over your crochet. It's, it's not a professional look. It can come off as quite disrespectful to your customers if they are lying all over what you're making. So just be careful what you're posting. The other thing to think about is how do you remove fur? There are times of the year when there is more fur around than usual. So I have two huskies. Now, I did not sell what, what I made when I had my huskies. And I certainly wouldn't now because the amount of fur that comes off these dogs is incredible. When they're molting, I feel like I'm living in a fur factory. Which, as I'm recording this, I am sat in a fur factory. My floor is covered, even though it was hoovered two hours ago. I could not sell what I make with huskies if I did not have a separate room that they couldn't get into. So this is where you may have to rethink things a little bit. 
if your pet gives off an awful lot of fur, then selling what you make may not be a tenable option because you simply cannot get rid of that much fur. As it is, I stopped selling what I make a while ago. I now create patterns. And when I'm taking the pictures for my patterns, I have to remove the husky hair to make sure I've got a fur-free picture. It really is that bad at times of the year. It's if if you've got a husky, you know what I'm talking about. They are just fur machines. But when I was selling what I made, I had a collie and a lovely border collie called Meg. And she didn't shed nearly as this much, but there was still fur. And before I packaged up what I made, I would always give everything a shake out, try and remove as much fur as possible. But I didn't wash it. And there's a couple of reasons for that. And one of them is, is that you can be adding another allergen. Some people are allergic to detergents. So I could end up not only sending them the dog fur, the dog dander, I could end up sending them something where they are allergic to the detergent I use. So I tended not to wash what I made and just tried to make it as clear as possible that I had a dog and it was possible fur was going to turn up. I mean, I tried my absolute best. You know, you always try and make sure you get as much fur off as possible, but it's not always 100% guaranteed. Awareness is the best thing possible. Most customers are fine when they see that declaration. And it just means that if they are allergic to pets, that they can make sure that they give everything a wash before they use it, once they receive it. Which is another reason why you should always include the care instructions in your product listing. So that if someone is allergic um, to pets, or if they think they may be allergic to whatever the yarn may have been washed in, that they know how to take care of it as soon as it arrives. So I would always list the care instructions as well in your product descriptions. So they know it can be easily, well, essentially decontaminated. Giving your customers as much information as, as possible protects you as well. Because if a customer takes a, exception to um, having an allergic reaction when they've just used your product for the first time, they can get very upset. And they may see your lack of information not as a lack of thought of that it could be important, of not knowing that it could be important, as covering it up, of deliberately hiding it to try and increase sales. So it's always better to include as much information as possible so you can avoid these situations. It protects you and it informs your customer. So yes, you absolutely can sell your crochet if you have pets. Just make sure that you keep your customers as informed as possible and keep your pets away from your yard and your crochet as much as you possibly can. Thank you for joining me today and listening to this episode. If you have any questions about this subject or would like to carry on the conversation, then why not come and join our Facebook group for crochet sellers? Whether you're selling what you make, writing patterns or making money from crochet another way, the support group is the place for you. It, you can also check out our newsletter. Just sign up using the link in the show notes and have tips and advice sent straight to your inbox every week. So thanks again for joining me and I shall see you next time for the next episode. Bye for now.